Today I'm going to show how I made this Lord of the Rings diorama. I bought a cheap set of sculpting knives with possibly the dullest knife in the world. I was using Super Sculpty, which I rolled into thin sheets, which I put on an aluminum armature of a tree. I used this spiky tooly thingy to make trail marks that I thought would look like bark. This was my first time sculpting, so I kind of just used every tool I had to see what worked the best. What ended up being the best method was using some cling wrap and the back of this tool. Then I put some little tree nipple, I mean knobs, and massaged them tenderly into place. I used some water to help attach them to the other clay. Then I added a second novel, purely for aesthetic reasons of course. Then I made these kind of vine, uh, vein things for the tree. Um, I'm not sure I really like how they turned out, but you work with what you got. I'm pretty sure I just wanted a reason to add some wormy dealies. I gently rubbed down the base of the tree with some isopropyl alcohol, making sure to get rid of any lumps and bumps. Then I proceeded to easily uh, easily uh, cut this wire. I drilled a hole to add the wire for the second branch. Yep, yep, still strong. Uh, uh, God, Jesus. Uh, 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 I got this, I got this. Uh, there we go. I added some aluminum around the wire to save on clay. Once more, I slapped some pink lasagna noodles on this bad boy. With my silicone sculpting tools, I once again made the bark for the tree. To make the smaller branches for the tree, I decided to use my drill and twist two pieces of armature wire together. After that, I clipped them into smaller sections. I shoved the smaller wire branches into the unbaked clay arm. Then I proceeded to spend a huge amount of time making these tree branches that were far too big because I didn't have the base in front of me. Had I had it in front of me, I would have realized that this arm was just way too massive. And there's the finished result. I also wrapped them in clay, which took way more clay than I had at the time. And so that's another reason that I definitely had to scrap it. This is when I realized that it wouldn't work, but luckily I had not baked anything at this point. So here are my much smaller branches. All it is is the wire bent into the shape and some clay on top of it. The clay kind of slipped around, but once it was baked, it was fine. My tree was a bit too top heavy, so I had to use some blue tack to keep it stuck down because it kept trying to fall over while I was working on it. I cleaned up my work environment and then I got onto the base. I used some inch thick polystyrene foam sheeting that you would get at any hardware store. After spray painting the tree, I marked the outline with a marker. I used some needle nose pliers to remove excess foam so the tree would look like it was sunken into the ground. This is my first diorama, so I tried experimenting a little bit with these cheap sponges and some paint, and they actually turned out okay. I mean, for a dollar, you can get several sponges, so you don't always have to go with something store-bought. Why not try to be a little bit creative? After committing a crime on this box, I pulled out this wraith root tree from WizKids. I actually really like this model. This is gonna be my stand-in for a Lord of the Rings Int. Not quite as good as Treebeard, but I think it'll do the job. And then I tried my hand at making some plaster of Paris, whoops, uh, plaster of Paris rocks. Once again, this, it's all a learning curve, all right? Give me a break. As I was saying, I made some plaster of Paris rocks out of some plaster and tin foil. They didn't turn out <laughs> great and I didn't really know what I was doing. So most of the tin foil got stuck into the plaster and I had took a long time to rip it out. So, um, just, I guess practice makes perfect. At this point, I glued my tree to my foam base. 
Uh, you know how I said it was top heavy earlier? Well, it was. And it fell and broke like half of the little tree limbs, so I had to glue them back on. I glued the broken pieces of plaster rocks on top of the base. And then I moved on to smearing a thin coat of plaster. Some people refer to this as spackle or drywall mud, and you can find this at any hardware store as well. Then I used some water to smooth out the top of the spackle so it looked more like mud and not jagged. Now onto my favorite part, painting the end was a lot of fun. It was a lot of browns and darker browns. Uh, I started with a really dark base coat and then I moved on to dry brushing a, a lighter like khaki color on top and I think it turned out really well. I also used a khaki color for the top of his head and some of the little accent pieces it's just like a highlight. Then I painted the base of the moss before adding actual foam on top. I added the green homemade clump foliage on top and glued it in place because I thought it added just a little bit more. Then I moved on to a thinned out PVA glue before adding the sand to the base. I got this sand from the aquarium section of a pet store and it turned out okay, but it was kind of clumpy and it had seashells in it, so I definitely wouldn't recommend it unless that's the look you're going for. At some point I added in rocks, but I forgot to film it because I'm fantastic at YouTube. I then sealed the whole thing with some isopropyl alcohol and PVA glue. And embarrassingly, <laughs> I didn't know that the nozzle on this bottle could be widened, so I was dripping the PVA out. Uh, it took me so long before I finally figured out that I was being an idiot. Then I used a mixture of acrylic paint and Mod Podge to seal in all of the dirt and rocks. However, this color choice really, really was a pain. I definitely should have went with a darker color because that's what I was going for, but for some reason I had it in my mind that tan, oh, dirt is tan. I used a heat gun to speed up the process of drying the paint because I kind of went on a little too thick. And here's me coming in with that darker paint. And as you'll see, because of the type of sand and because I used tan, it made all of these little holes that had tan paint in it. So it really was a nightmare scenario. <laughs> and just the thing I learned was have in mind the final goal, because you can see here, this these little bubbles, I all had to go in and put the darker paint in there. And it ended up like two or three coats of paint. It was really, just painful. So I had to redo all of this dry brush work here. I painted the rocks with just a standard gray uh, because most of it was gonna be covered in moss anyway. By far, the biggest mistake I made in this build was getting too excited and placing down my foliage early. So this made everything that I should have done before putting foliage on about 10 times harder than it should have been. But damn, if it doesn't feel so good, putting those tiny little bits of fluff. I sprinkled the rest off into a paper towel so I could save it for later. For the top of the tree, I got this really cheap wire mesh from the dollar store, which is just a cooking pot lid to keep spills from happening and I cut it out and it's a pain to get it out but it really does work pretty well for what I had in mind. And if you hate yourself you can wear it as a necklace. Once that's done I rolled the edges up so it would look a little more natural and be easier to work with but keep in mind this is sharp wire. In hindsight, maybe I should have used some gloves, but it really is not that bad. I used a screwdriver to poke some holes for where the top of the branches would go, and I used some needle nose pliers to 
widen it. Once those were done, it just sat right on top and then I could glue it into place. Once again, I hot glued some clump foliage that I had made in a blender out of some foam onto the top as the leaves. I'm sure you could use other glues, but I just used hot glue. It did make a lot of stringy bits, but since this is supposed to be Fanghorn, I figured maybe it could just be a giant spider web. Now on to Merry and Pippin. I just got two generic hobbits and I clipped off the parts that didn't really fit the build, like their bow and arrows. I also ended up cutting this guy's arm off because he wasn't really in kind of a good position and his other arm, unfortunately. But don't worry, I gave him his arms back. I made them out of Milliput and honestly, he looks kind of swole by the end of it. For the squished orc, I just made Milliput. I knew it didn't really have to look that good and I don't even think you can see it in the final thing due to the color scheme and the foliage but I figured I would know it's there and that's all that really matters. I just painted Merry and Pippin the base colors that they had in the movie before they went into Fanghorn. And honestly, at this scale and at my skill level, uh, I was just doing a good job to hit the right part of the body. <laughs> The orc I just painted kind of a dark brownish color because uh, I got lazy, I guess, to be honest with you. And also I figured maybe it was, uh, you know, mud from under Treebeard's foot. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that. Then I proceeded to hand drill out some holes for some bushes. And this is where the foliage that I'd already put down was a pain because you can see all these white bits of foam that merged in with the foliage and so now as you can see there's white pieces everywhere. For these more barren bushes I use this cinnamon brush thing that I got from the dollar store. If you cut it apart it makes these perfect little twigs for your bushes and if you drill a hole they'll just fit down in it. You don't even have to glue it if you don't want to. I glued some clump foliage onto the top of those painted foam pieces earlier to make some thicker shrubs and I think they turned out great that I put it at the base of the tree. I also spray painted some moss a tan color just for some variation in the foliage and I also added some to the tree itself. For some twigs, I took the cinnamon sticks from earlier and I just crunched them up and laid them on top of the ground so it looked like there was some ground coverage. Then I sealed the whole thing once again with some isopropyl alcohol and PVA glue. To finish it off, I painted all around the base with a dark black paint. And from there I figured I was pretty much done. Now we'll go on to the glamour shots. If you made it to the end, I just wanted to say thank you guys for watching. I put a lot of work into this project and I think it turned out great. I'm happy I could share it and I have more projects to come. So if you liked it, please subscribe.